satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to start out the day looking at the E-mini S&P on the daily chart. Uh, this, to me, is a very, very important chart, folks. If you notice a little red 382 retracement that we made on Friday. You can also see the ABCD pattern that was there. This is an exact pattern that uh, Gartley talked about in his book on page 222. He said, look for an ABCD correction in a bear market or an ABCD correction in a bull market and trade those. He said those are the very best that he had found, and it took him two pages. Out of those 500 and some pages in the book, uh, he took two full pages describing this pattern, and it was a life changer for me. And it's probably going to change my life again here, too, because we hit that 3A2 spot on Friday. Today we broke down. I'll show the chart in a little bit what we did, but we made a uh, really nice 382 retracement, and then we went down to an ABCD and then had the rally up. So we're having some really good swings, and I'll cover those in just a moment. But this is extremely important, folks, from a historical perspective from what I learned over those years because that was in the 70s that I – uh, saw this pattern f really clearly for the first time. It was around night. It was around, I think it was probably around August of uh, '74, as I recall. And of course, we had the the October crash and the December double bottom crash in October of '74, when the Dow was trading around 500 and something. And then from there, it never looked back and went up to uh, you know well above 30,000. Well, way above 30,000, 30, 37,000, I believe, or maybe even 38. But anyway, this is really an important pattern because that 3A2 is coming in from the high that we made back on August the 28th. If you remember, that was a very significant cycle date also. And so uh, we had a very, very strong move. Uh, I had not seen sentiment change so quickly in such a short period of time. But this rally has lasted just about exactly one month. Uh, actually, let's try that again, folks. It's lasted a little more than a month. And so we are watching uh, the fact that we, it's, it's actually three weeks. Let's let's call, a, call it the way it is. It's a three-week rally, 21 days, and we're right up into it. We opened lower, which I was expecting it to do today. Uh, after it opened lower, I'll put this up and we'll chat about that as we get through looking at it. Uh, no guests uh, today. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we don't have any guests and we finally have a guest on Thursday, which will be Tim Bost. And then we will see if anybody else pops in and, and chats with us later on this week. But we want to look at some of these charts here. This is what happened to the S&P last night, folks. From starting out, I just, you know, because I watch it to see where the easy entries are. And we'll get this up here and put the chart up so we'll be able to see it. Now, this is a four-minute chart starting at last night. You'll notice we gap down sharply. There was your 3A2. And then you gap down sharply, came all the way down here. They rallied up to a 3A2. Then you came down, and then you made an ABCD again at the 3A2. And then what happened next, you see the 3A2 that came in right here, right before the market was opening. And then you can see we had the big move down. Well, the big move down was very, very important, folks. And I'm going to bring it to your attention because it goes back to those four little letters that we like so much, A, B equals C, D, because you'll see right here today on the low of the day, we were making from the high that we made back here mid-morning down to the low, up to the high, which was a 61% retracement, and it came down within two points of the exact low. Missed it. Uh, the low went a little bit lower by about two points. And then what we did, folks, is we rallied all the way up 
to the 61% retracement on the day. They're at 3904. And then, boom, down she came. And I just checked a few seconds ago, and it was down about 30 handles from that. So we're getting a lot of swings. And that's important from a technical standpoint because, you know, we look at these patterns to give us an idea of what other buddy, what other people are thinking. I, I don't know what they're thinking. All I know is what they're acting. And that's what I'm watching to see what happens. Folks, I can say with 100 degree percent of, of actual, uh, my, all of my technical uh, years of training, that if we close above that 3930 level, uh, the highs that we made on Friday, the high was 39.23, the 3.82 was at 39.30, the SPX, the cash, hit it exactly, went a couple pennies above it, but it hit it exactly. But if we close above that 39.30 level, any time this week, that means that something is different, and this market's going to go and go a lot higher. Other than that, nothing has really changed. If you'll take a look at the newsletter this week, you'll see the charts, and we're going to look at some of them when we come up to the break. You're going to see uh, the charts of the um, – hold on one second – the charts of the dollar index doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing, a perfect ABCD. Okay, the treasury bonds and treasury notes making perfectly symmetrical uh, retracements in a bear market. And here we have the Fed coming up here on Wednesday, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be all hands on deck because this this could really be an exciting time here, because there could be a giant surprise uh, into this level. Remember, uh, many people were surprised that the market didn't crash. Everybody was talking about the crash. In fact, back in October when we were talking to uh, Tim Boss, we said yes, there was a possibility of that, but Tim pointed out that the market was not acting like a crash because it was rallying after October 16th and not falling down. And that told us that we're most probably going to rally. And where do we rally to? Right up to the 382 of the high we made back in August. So that's what we're looking at now. Folks, if you trade your, your idea of trading around a crash, go do something else. Because they only happen about once in, in a generation, and they're over in a matter of a few days, a week or so at the most. And not many people do get to participate in them. Now, we try to do that, but to try to, try to anticipate a crash, it's got to line up absolutely perfectly. And this one just did not line up perfectly. And, uh, and also, we had Larry Williams telling us that, you know, this was the strongest uh, down move that we've had, you know, uh, in stocks ever let's get this up here because this is one that literally was quite scary and this is still scary because you know the market has broken down uh, below lows that we've not seen as far as the fear index look at this we're way below we were back in the 80s folks when we had inflation at 13 14 percent you know two t-bills were yielding 13 percent and not you know uh, uh the treasury uh, uh <laughs> the California municipal bonds were, were tax-free, were yielding 16%. That didn't last very long because they were called away. But anyway, that's what we're looking at here today uh, because this is important. Any close above that 3930 level, uh, boy, that that's, that is going to be flat-out bullish. And the today, actually today's low in the S&P, the one earlier that we had, I don't know if we made new lows yet or not, but that was within a heartbeat of the 382 so watch the 382 today at 3860 in the s&p because that's a that's a key number too because if we don't get below that gotta pay attention we'll be right back 877-927-6648 currencies commodities and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe which is why it's a great time to try out teddy kegstat's tiger forex report Teddy Kegstaff breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the dollar index, and it's very important to take a look at this chart if you're interested in foreign currencies, because they help rule the world, of course, because that's where money flows. Anyway, if you'll notice here that we've just completed an A, B, C, D pattern, still in a very strong uptrend. You can see this strong uptrend has continued. Each of these corrections are very, very similar. They're only off by just a little bit. This one is a little bit more, but this is the first really good ABCD pattern that we've had in the dollar index for a long time. See, we didn't have any ABCDs in this one, and it's very hard to find one here, and there was nothing here, but look at this one. This one's finally filled up. Now, if we only rally a little bit here, and the euro's down considerably today, as is the pound, the dollar, you know, the yen is moving against the dollar again. So, you know, the dollar index is still pretty strong. But if we go below that level of uh, 110, 110, 10, that tells us that there's something's changed in the foreign exchange markets, and we're going to start to see the dollar start to sell off. Why is that important? Well, folks, it's hard to have a long-term bull market in gold if you have a strong dollar. And we have had a strong dollar here for a very, very long time, i.e., gold has dropped from 2070 down to 1639 today. And, you know, we've been trying to trade it from the short side for quite some time, which has worked pretty well. But, you know, someday that's going to stop. And the key here, and this is, you know, this is one of the things that you look at as a technician. You don't need to know the reasons why. In fact, by the time you find out the reasons why they're going to tell you, you don't even know if those reasons are right. We got so much mis misinformation out there in the world today and everything, you can't believe anything. The one thing you can believe is that chart. Because if prices are going down, there's more sellers. And if prices are going up, there's more buyers. What could be harder to figure out than that? So what we're watching now is to see what kind of a rally we're getting here today in the euro, the pound, the yen, Canadian dollar, and the Australian dollar to see what kind of oomph the dollar index has if it has any here. Because if we only have a really quiet three-day rally here, in other words, a sell-off in the euro and the pound just a couple of days very quietly, this tells you that dollar index might be finished and look out because then you're going to see some fireworks uh, in some other markets like the gold market and potentially 
in the bond market. One of the questions that I had to answer this week three different times, I hope I answered it correctly, and that is how much of a rally do you think we will get in the Treasury notes and Treasury bonds? Boys and girls, we have made a major high, uh, i.e. a low in interest rates. You know, that's the one where they talked about negative interest rates. You know, we've been in this bear market in notes and bonds now for two and a half years. And by golly, it doesn't look like it's, uh, you know, it's starting to bounce a little bit, but it's still very, very shallow. I mean, it's not doing very much at all, considering, you know, how much of a move it's had down. I mean, it's just a huge move. Let's just take a look here at the Treasury bonds. I'm going to bring this up here and show it to you one way, and then I'm going to show it to you in the eyes of the Treasury notes, which is the shorter term paper. But here's the long term. You'll notice here our target on this you know, came in at around 126, and we went all the way down to 116, and that's very close. And we still could make this level down here because we haven't quite reached it. Now, we've reached it in the Treasury notes, of course, but we've not reached it in the Treasury bonds. This market is in a long – there's the there's the negative interest rates up here when they try to feed us that. There was your big ABCD right up there, and then we came down, and we've completed now. We're completing this pattern. So – and even if this is a rally, folks, in this rally, oh man, alive! I mean, it really could be, it could be a, a real, uh, a really big one because everybody knows interest rates are going to go higher. That doesn't mean they're going to go higher today. They just know that interest rates are going to go higher. We've heard this all along now for quite a while, but that doesn't mean you can't get a tremendous short covering rally in these things. And that's what it would be. It would be a short covering rally and it could be of a spectacular nature, almost as spectacular as what we've seen in the Dow Jones last week, where we rallied 12, I uh, know 2,200 points, I believe is what the Dow Jones rallied. Uh, we were up uh, 1,100 points in two days and another 700 points on Friday. I mean, it was an incredible move. And where did it stop? Exactly at the 78% level of the last high that we made. And let's take a look at that one now because that that is something also that needs to be uh, needs to be looked at. And we will get that up here. Here's where we are. Okay, and this will be the chart coming up. You'll be able to see it quite clearly here. It was right to the money too, folks. There was not any give or take or no slack at all. You'll see there was our 78% retracement right here. Now, if you want to see... How these things work we're going to defy human nature here folks and try to do the work yourself I'd like for you to measure from the low that we made you know way back here to the high that we made right up in here you'll see that one and then measure the distance between this low and this high and you know what's going to happen folks you're going to say oh my goodness those are exactly equal and guess what they were both 78.6% retracements. That's why, and look at this, folks. I mean, this is an explosive move. This is when the crash was supposed to be happening. Well, it was a crash, but it was an upside-down crash. <laughs> so, you know, we, we mentioned that once we got on this Sunday right here where the market couldn't even move lower when the news was incredibly bearish, and I don't remember exactly what the various part was. It could have been interest rates. It could have been uh, Putin. It could have been anything. Uh, China, who knows? But anyway, you know, we had that huge rally, and we stopped right here. Now, this is a really powerful rally, and we could easily back off just a little bit and then go cruising to the upside. We could certainly do that. There's no reason, rhyme or reason why it would do it, but you could do it. That's why you've got to respect those lines that you see on the chart because they're telling you that there's more buyers and more sellers. Right now, today, there's more sellers, but we haven't seen that for seven days. I mean, every little correction has been whoo, off to the upside. So this is far from starting down a bare leg. It started it from the right perspective today, but that doesn't mean it's going to continue that way. That's uh, the main thing that we're paying close attention to. Let me double check to see where we are. We're still around 38.90. We had a, that's actually come back a little, quite a bit here. We rallied back another 20 points. We got down as low as 38.77, and we're working our way back. The Dow's jumped up another 100 points, and the pound keeps going lower. We're down to the 114s after being at 116 on uh, last Friday. We were at 101.8 in the uh, euro. Now we're back at 98. We dropped 150 pips in that. 
and the price of the uh, crude oil has dropped from uh, – I think it was 89. We dropped all the way down to 85. We dropped four handles uh, in the crude oil, and that's uh, you know that's been a pretty big move today. We've had moves of two dollars up and two dollars down in the crude oil, like it you know didn't even exist. So these are, the, as they say in the Chinese curse, we may we live an interesting time, and we certainly are. That's for sure. Well, we pay. We'll be right back, folks. Pay a few bills. 877-927-6648. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the euro, and I think what we'll do is we'll take a look at this today because you can see here that we've been in a really strong downtrend. You can see the 382 rallies all the way down. And then finally now... We have, as of Friday, you'll notice that we did finally complete. There's a, there's your A, B, C, D, okay? That came in. You see we're right up to the 61% retracement of the high that we made back here uh, in uh, August. And now, you know, this is what we're doing. This is where we were on Friday. You see we started coming down on Thursday and Friday. And, of course, we're down again today. And um, that is that has completed that A, B, C, D pattern. And so, you know, that's telling you that something different has happened, that we finally had an A, B, C, D. It looked like the market was turning, but it didn't go any higher than the A, B, C, D and still in a major downtrend. And that's why you've got to pay, you know, close attention to these things as you're watching them because 
you, you know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, but they're a good indication of, uh, you know, what's really going to happen if you're if you're paying attention to these things. And that's what we try to do here is to see the ones that are trying to, you know, look the uh, look the most interesting. Anyway, now let's take a look here uh, at the uh, dollar yen because this is another one that is huge, and it's had some really strong intervention by the Bank of Japan. It didn't work very well. And you'll notice here, as you bring this chart up, you'll see that um, this has been the strongest, the dollar against the yen. You'll notice that we had this pretty good correction right here. You know, nothing more than a you know 50% retracement. Uh, it was all, not even close to this one right here. And it was just a little bit more than this correction right here. But it didn't damage the downtrend at all. In order for the yen to start to gain against the, the, the dollar, what it's got to do is it's got to get below that 145 level, and it's trading at 148, almost 149 today. So, you know, they're not showing any weakness in these things. So this is a very, very powerful sign of things that we're, uh, that we're looking on. And I just realized that uh, this was one of the few times that I missed the putting the British pound in, even though I, I trade the British pound quite a bit, and I didn't put it into the uh, – into the list this week son of a god that's not good but let's take another one here that uh, had a really big move and this is a the daily chart of the australian dollar remember now this is related to commodity prices and stuff and it's been in a very very strong downtrend and as you can see you know we came down and made this really large abcd pattern here and what did we do we rallied exactly up to the 382 on thursday and it just started to roll over so you know, we're still seeing weakness in the Australian dollar, the Canadian dollar, you know, uh, Japanese yen, British pound. And that means that the U.S. dollar is strengthening. And so until that U.S. dollar gets below that 110.03.08 level, you know, it looks like we're getting ready. Now, that we have to really watch the currency moves in the euro, the pound, the yen, and also the dollar index. Because if, they, if it doesn't have a lot of steam you know, getting ready to make new highs, that's telling you that, uh-oh, yes, there may be something that is getting, that is different in the market, and we want to be able to, uh, we want to be able to, you know, act on that. So that's the, the main thing that we want to be uh, looking at here as we're watching these uh, currencies. And as we said before, it's very hard to have a bull market. It's not nearly impossible to have a bull market in the uh, gold market without the movement of the U.S. dollar being weak. And the U.S. dollar is far from being weak. You know, we're, you know, way, way back above that 112, 111 and change already in just a matter of a short period of time, telling you that those signs of a market being very, very strong is extremely, extremely important. Now, we're going to take a look here at the gold chart for two different reasons. We've been short gold for a long time. We had a Really nice trade in it over the weekend, uh, selling it on Thursday, uh, covering it uh, this morning, and uh, still uh, we're uh, flat. We're flat to gold right now, but we're looking uh, for another rally before we can get down to this level right here, folks. This is really important. This is a weekly chart of gold. You can see the big ABCD pattern coming in here, the 78% retracement here. This was back when the uh, I think that was in 2000 and, uh, 221 or 220, yeah. And anyway, that, that tells us that uh, that's a really, really key support that we're having into this area right here because it is big. Now, we've got a double top. We, we've shown that many times. And then ever since that time, folks, all you had to do was to sell those 382 rallies, and they have been really big. And there's been some – we've had $100 swings in these things to the uptide upside but they turn around so fast that it's easier to be on the short side than the long side and that's uh that's the side you want to be on there is no long side there is no short side there's only the right side and that's the side you want to try to be on uh, we don't always get that opportunity but if you follow these little patterns sometimes they'll be very very close to picking out you know where we're supposed to be as we look at some of these uh things uh going forward now, I wanted to bring up one other thing with the Treasury notes. I have to jump back because I I missed it, and doggone it, I've got it. Uh, 
It's not on this group here. So I'm not going to worry too much about it, but I want to bring it up one more time because the Fed is coming in and we are very, very close to some major, major ABCD patterns here uh, in this uh, market. We've had a rally of about three handles here, but look at this ABCD still measures a little bit lower, folks, down to this level right around 107. So I think we still got a chance to maybe maybe the Fed will come in and make it 1% uh, uh rate rate increase instead of 0.75 like they're looking for whatever it is they're going to do something surprising because uh these markets need surprise and by golly you know they're seeing it. it's holding up extremely well well it should the shorts got to be scared to death raise your hand yeah i i what i did last night folks is when that market made that 382 retracement at 3906 i said that's where you got to take your stand and you got to put your stop above the uh you know, above the high that we made there on Friday, which would have been 3923, because that was the 382 on the weekly. But if we close above that, and if we close above that, that that is not going to be bearish, folks. And you know, I, I'm very bearish longer term, but by golly, I'm not going to be bearish if it doesn't. It shouldn't do it because it's up so many uh, days in a row, and in in such an overbought condition like we've seen in the Dow Jones. Oh my goodness, that's like. Uh, you know, mother God and country stuff. I mean, it was so powerful to the upside. But, you know, we really, you know, we go down 20 handles in the S&P and you look up and by golly, it's right back to near that 3,900 level. So it's not acting very bearish at all. But, you know, the bear side seems to be the way to play it today. But it's still real early in the game. And we want to be able to uh, be there when that final bell tolls at the end of the month and you've had a really good profitable month. That's what you'd... Uh, that's what you'd really like to see. So let's uh, remind ourselves of that as we look along the trail here of some of these things. Now, what I want to do when we come back, I want to uh, go back and talk a little bit about the uh, crude oil market because we've had uh, uh, some pretty big action going into crude. It should have been much stronger, but in fact, it didn't do anywhere near what it should have done. And I wanted to get this up here to show you what uh, what's happening in crude oil when we come back from the break. So Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Okay, I hope that is okay, Al. I don't know whether I did it with the timing right. I can't tell by this this clock. Uh, yeah, look close enough. What the hell? You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, and I uh, posted a chart of the crude oil. I wanted to show you what happened last night. You'll notice that uh, it opened uh, slightly higher uh, right at the 382 retracement and then had a very, very strong break. It broke uh, well over uh, $2 uh, a barrel uh, to the downside, but being crude oil the way that it is, it did its usual thing, and that came back and started to rally extremely strongly, and I wanted to show you what happened in that rally so that you could see that these numbers, once they start to expand and contract, you'll be able to see that we uh, they, they still work. I mean, that's uh, it's just a matter of the time frame that you're looking at. You can see on this one here, the 382 came in right here. We had a quick pop above it by about 40 pips, and then boom, and down we came, and now we're heading for this to the downside. That's it. So anyway, that's why we're watching the crude oil. But something else has really happened uh, overnight, folks. I tried to get Rich Anderson as our. Oh, we've got a uh, we've got a caller, Mr. Z's on the line. Hi, John. How are you doing today? Hello, Rob. What can I do for you, buddy? Question. Uh, let me ask you just to finish your thought on Rich Anderson. That sounded very interesting. Well, I was going to ask him to talk about the thing with the Ukraine, you know, because the grains opened up sharply higher. They gave quite a bit of it back, but, you know, there was a big bullish announcement, you know, the fact that uh, Putin was going to disallow the grain shipments. I don't know exactly, but, you know, Rich understands that. So hopefully I'll have him on tomorrow, but that's what he was talking about. So oh, what is your question? Good. Larry, I, um, uh, I'm calling to ask for your assistance, please, on uh, Frank Clemson. Now, of course, you speak regularly of your trading of uh, the British pound, the um, uh, the euro. Uh, you do that very regularly, apparently. I, I don't recall hearing you speak that much about trading the yen currency. Do you? No, I don't trade it that often. Uh, I really don't. I mean, I was looking to be a seller up there in that 151 area. I missed it. That It uh, happened in the middle of the night, so I wasn't able to get on board. But, no, I don't use the dollar yen. I mean, I should because it trades so beautifully. It's been such a strong trend. John, all you had to do was just hang on and not even trade. I mean, just forget about it because it, it went up every day. You know, the yen was just extremely weak against the dollar, so that was a no-brainer. But I'm looking for patterns, and the patterns show up easier in the euro, which is much larger than the yen. And then the pound is also bigger than the yen, too. So they give me better patterns to look at, and that's what I'm looking at for as far as risk control. Okay, I appreciate it uh, on that. Um, when you do trade uh, the yen currency, are you using the cash market via the banks uh, trading the USJY, or would you uh, tend to use the uh, the CME uh, <clears throat> IMM contract, the JYZ2 in this case? John, it really doesn't make any difference, but it's better for most traders to use the CME for one particular reason, and that is it's an actual contract. 
Whereas with the others, you're trading against the bank itself, whatever Forex bank, you're, you know, whether it's Goldman Sachs, Citibank, Saxo Bank, they have their own departments and they take the other sides of all these trades. I hope you already, you already knew that, but uh, whether they're right or wrong, that's what they do because they work on the volume that goes through. So, But the, the contract at the Chicago Mercantile is a valid commodity contract that, that the foreign exchange banks, they've never failed yet. And I don't think that they will, but, you know, it's easier. And not only that, but, you know, usually they'll tr they'll charge like one pip, which is, uh, you know, like $11 in the, uh, in the euro, okay, uh, to get in and out. Well, you can trade that same contract at the CME exactly the same for $4. So you, you get right. a 40% discount on your trading volume, uh, on your trades just from doing that. So I recommend people, as long as they're trading – under 50 contracts. If you start trading more than 50 contracts, then yes, you've got to go through the Forex bank. But up until that, you can trade those CMEs, you know, real easily because they're very liquid. Yeah, uh, no doubt. And I can I can assure you, I uh, I personally will never get close to trading anywhere near 50 contracts <laughs> not, on the CME. So, <laughs> so I guess I'm safe there. Um, just to let you know, Larry, uh, uh, people who are in uh, TFNN's Tiger's Den, I just posted the hourly chart for the past eight days for both the dollar-yen uh, cash currency mm -hmm. and that uh, CME uh, JYZ2 contract. Anyway, uh, so I posted those in there, and I'm just wondering if you can pull up uh, any of your chart work on either of those, the cash currency or that CME contract, and tell me if you see a low risk buy on the the yen futures, and that would be a low risk short on the dollar yen itself. I don't. Uh, I we can have, tell you ahead of time. We had that high up at that one fifty one. That's the dollar yen. I'm just wondering if we've got a uh, a little Gartley uh, ABC that we can uh, trade, uh, speculating a lower high in the dollar yen and a higher low in that yen futures. The thing to look for is the 150 level, uh, John. That's where that would end up. If it gets a, if it doesn't get above the 150, then there is a low risk short there. But other than that, there's there's very little showing in that right now. Okay, I appreciate me? that. Yeah, there there isn't and, really uh, much going on there at I'm all. Sorry? There is not much going on in the yen right now at all. It's just you know ratcheting back up towards a high, but very quiet. Nothing, nothing yeah. of any. Uh, uh, excitement anyway. Very good. Okay, Larry, uh, thanks so much for your help. I do appreciate it. John, it's always nice talking to you, and thanks for coming in and, you know, asking those questions, because if you're asking them, somebody else must be asking them too. So that's what we're trying to do here is to give you some information. Now, what I'm going to do now, folks, we're going to switch gears, and we're going to go over to the grain markets. I'm going to bring up a chart here. This is a, the 15-minute charts, overnight charts, of the corn and also the wheat because the news was you know it was supposed to be incredibly bullish and everything at least that's what they were yelling about uh, in the middle of the night but you'll notice here we had this huge move we were up 65 cents in the wheat and as you can see we backed off all the way to the 61 percent retracement here we had corn up 25 cents and it came down and made a 61% retracement of the low we made Friday. So these markets are easily tradable, even with this news going on the way that it is, for heaven's sakes. I mean, we're having tremendous amounts of news, and yet these markets are trading actively. And that's really good. And I think they are going to continue that way. And especially with the Fed in this week, you've got to be really mindful of what's going on in these notes and bonds. Because it is, as bearish as I have been on notes and bonds, I smell a, a really important possible rally, and that's all it's going to be is a rally in a bear market, and that's why we'd want to be able to uh, you know, pay close attention. Now, we've only got a minute to go in this segment, so if you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648. Uh, if you be happy to answer any questions, like Mr. Z just called in, and then we'll be uh, paying very close attention to that also. Now, I wanted to show one other thing, and that is the shorter-term chart of the gold market. And that we showed you the weekly before, and this is going to add to it. You'll see here we've got just a few seconds to go, but you'll be able to see there's what we're looking for. Now, we sold it up into here. We made our first objective already, and we still think we can get down here below 1,600 one more time 
And that's going to be the one where I really think uh, maybe the dollar will turn. What it'll do, I don't know. But this comes in at around 1570 uh, in the gold market. We're trading around 1539 right now. So we're still a little bit away. So we'll take a little break here. 877-927-6648. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks, and I posted the chart of the uh, E-mini S&P showing you the 382 retracement on the daily. As long as we don't take out that high of Friday, which was 39.23, we've got a chance to have a very significant move to the downside, even taking out the lows of October 14th. But that doesn't mean that that can't happen. Hold on. We'll see if we can make this chart just a little bit better. Oh, dear. I messed it up. Hold on just a second, boys and girls. Ah, not good. Not good. Hold on. I can do it again. Just a second here. This is such an important chart from my perspective because it's uh, it really describes the Gartley as I know it, the perfect ABCD right at the 382. It's also at the 50% retracement or the high that we made back in here. So there's a whole bunch of numbers, but mainly that 382 with the ABCD. And, of course, the Dow Jones – Remember, the Dow Jones is, is price-weighted. It's not cap-weighted, so it's influenced heavily by high-priced stocks in the Dow, and that's what's been doing, moving it. There's seven or eight stocks in the Dow that are in the several in Goldman Sachs and United, uh, it was United Healthcare, whatever those healthcare stocks are. Uh, you know, those are making the thing go up. 
uh, quite a bit. So this is the key. Uh, as long as we don't close this week or today, tomorrow, whatever it is, and if we have a really strong down move, and I mean more than 40 or 50 points, now let's say 60 points in the E-mini S&P, that would tell us, yeah, that top is probably in, and we get we might get ready to make another low, uh, possibly taking out the low of October the 14th, you know, coming into right after the election. Remember, Tim Boss was saying sometime in, right around Thanksgiving to Christmas, there should be a pretty good bottom. And also, Stan Harley was saying that there could be a pretty good bottom there uh, if we uh, don't go any higher than what we've done here uh, on Friday. But, you know, it was a really strong rally. Anybody that stood in front of that, you know, they had to have uh, more information than I have. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. 